Okay. What do you mean? Don't get it right. What? No, it wasn't you. <laughs> I'd, as much as I'd love to blame Did it on you. Something to their sound. Much. Yeah. What's wrong with what's your? What's wrong with your sound? What's wrong with my sound? Does it sound what off? Sound Any what? No, nothing. It's fine. It's fine. Um. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, that it wasn't your fault. No, you it wasn't yours wrong. at all. I couldn't. No. I don't even want to tell you. You guys didn't even do a test today. Yeah, we didn't. Well, we don't do a test usually. Well, so how can it be his fault? Well, it could always be his fault. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. I you notice how the host is blaming the guests. I know, I love it. <laughs> no, I'm not blaming the guests. No, We're no. blaming the sponsors. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, speaking of what, did, did we get your new commercial yet or no? We yeah, it's, we did, but we're adding photographs to it. Uh, should be by mid end of week. Hopefully, we'll be done. The audio portions complete. Now we're finished. Just, just send me the audio. Oh, you want want to put Christmas pictures in it? it exactly. Exactly. We, you know, if you're gonna, you've got a visual medium, we don't want to neglect that. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Oh. I understand. So if I might just do one thing. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, tonight, owls. Well, I'm coming oh. in as the owl, the mysterious, the mysterious owl. You know, her friend used to used to hoot at her because she's uh, she had these glasses where she was very owl looking. Yes, I think oh. that's part of the inspiration for this evening. Oh. I thought she got hold wow. of some psilocybin mushrooms. How old are you, how old are you doing tonight? I was trying to give you a visual, you know, before the photos. Right. Brad didn't even know I was going to do that. That no, is no, my was, contribution that, to the owl. Because I mean, that was really good, by the way. I just you know. <laughs> I had to dig deep into the acting skills for that one. Well, oh. as, you know, the thing is, is tonight we are continuing the going to the birds in rock and roll. Right. And well, you know, because the first uh, the first part of this this month, we did the blackbirds and we did ravens and right. the crows and then last week was eagles mm -hmm. and now we have owls so okay. the cutest of all birds in 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 some in some circles the, you know everyone thinks they're cute and fluffy we're going to find out the the owl has a lot of mysterious behavior and some of it isn't really flattering they're vicious little suckers i mean i mean really little owls yeah. I, I listen. I know a little bit about owls. I, I, we have the nice little ones down here that you know dig in your the burrowing, the burrowing owls right. that right. make you have to stop construction and all those guys. Why are they only in but, Cape Coral? Yeah, how come we don't have those burrowing owls in uh, Fort Myers? Right. We we do, but they really like Cape Coral. They've they've inhabited that is their big old nest, and they just love it there. So you know what? That is a deal with it situation yeah. because they were here first. Yeah, those little you know guys. What? We would welcome them here. Yeah, we, we would like them. We're not, we're not constructing anything. On, and they won't no. move in. We should advertise to the owl community of Cape Coral. Well, the fact that you have an opening, we should let them know. Opening? Oh, we, 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 we've well, got, we, we, have, we have the vast tracts of land that they could inhabit. We oh, look at this. We have a bluebird box. Yeah, we got a bluebird box. Right. We have we all, um, I, I know her. Um, we, uh, uh, I bet you do. You, you <laughs> bet I do. I, I made her wear the helmet, too, believe me. <laughs> I, had to, I had to crop this one uh, a, a little bit to get the appropriate family parts in there. Um, but I'm <laughs> This is an outstanding tattoo. If you notice, uh, it has a woman and then it has an owl on top. That mm -hmm. is Athena. The Athena? Athena. Oh. The I thought oh. Athena somewhere. Athena as in the Who song? Yeah, like Athena. Ah. As in the Who song. As, as in the Who song. And Athena, she was the goddess of wisdom and war. The, you know, what's really- the Goddess, whoa, whoa, whoa. Goddess of wisdom of war? Wisdom and war. A oh, wisdom and war. Is that who they're yeah. singing about? Is her? I don't know. If you're going to wage war, you better have some wisdom behind it, right? Yep, and that's kind of what it meant. This is another adorable little owl tattoo art. And Here. if you notice, it has some language and some other little symbols around it. Yes, and I just want to make I want to make everybody aware these are all Colby's tattoos. <laughs> 
<laughs> Every uh, one of them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they're all on her back. But no, I, I digress. <laughs> People are going, really? Well, that was giving that one. one. I, I do like that one. Well, and the reason why happy. she likes that is because, check this out. That is Colby's coin. Wow. Wow. Okay, but the A is the A is sideways in the, yeah. on the coin. So that. Oh no, it's not. I see. I see. Okay. okay, it's not vertical. Right. That spells out dear to Athena in a long, broken down language. But that is Athena's name, A T O E. So, A O E. Yes. Oh wow! In what yeah. language? The in Greek, ancient Greek, and this dates back to about four eighty to 440 BC. Wow. Yeah, so it's around 2,500 years old, this coin. And what's interesting about this coin, it was minted as almost as a celebration of, of the Greek army being able to hold off the oncoming Persian Empire. Was that so the 300? The 300, and this was, in celebration of that and everyone was praying to who athena, athena to get through that nightmare scenario because she's the goddess of war and wisdom exactly and then here is an here's another real interesting portion of it is the other side and that is athena and she has is wearing like a wreath around her head on the crown yeah. And it is not a military gear, like what was shown in the tattoo. The tattoo they show, you see, that is called the Corinthian stator, this Corinthian helmet. The and Corinthian that, stator? Stator. Uh, S-T-A-T-E-R. Stator oh. is a type of coin. Stator. That is a, a standard measurement of money for one month of combat pay in Greece. So if you were a good person and you could survive a month in the Greek or the, uh, the Greek army, you'd get one of these. Now, wow. What about the coins that have her wearing the Corinthian stator? Wouldn't you get one of those too? Uh, if you were a general, yes. Oh, so this was for like just the soldiers. Right, this was a standard measurement of payment. Um, what, oh, so wait, so let me ask a question. Um, how do you know in regards to trading how much it's worth you know i mean if you're if it's a coin it's obviously currency so if you've been out there for a month what do you get to buy with it so here's here's the cool thing that was a really good, good question. question you know around fifth century bc this is the beginning of coinage the coin age and it was not only money that was weighed by silver and the value of silver but it was also being backed by the government and recognized by the government so there was this standard uh, ability of this money so they knew when they had this standard of money they could go into town and buy what they needed to buy and and the amount of money that it was worth back then was a nominal amount now the gold ones that was worth a lot of money you had to if you were given one of these gold stator coins back then you had to be in top military brass if you're an average person you would be looked upon like where'd you get it but like when you have this coin can you get a month's worth of rent somewhere and food and and you know supplies probably not they'd need uh, a couple of them ah uh, well, well uh, did they make change yeah, yes. right. And, I was thinking excellent the same question. <laughs> there was a bunch of change back then. They had this was a one full stinger, and then they would have different denominations down to a sixteen. Okay, okay, I get that. Okay, because I mean, I thought if this is the only thing you had, who knows how much it's worth? There's no Nasdaq or any of that, so it had to be had some own. kind of common denominator between the people that had them. Had the money was a common denominator they had it broken down from 16th all, all the way up so that was a really good question and what's interesting is remember money since it travels through hands to hands to hands the they understood the power of the imagery that was put on the coins so the imagery on this coin says this owl 
because what's interesting is um, in Athens, these little owls are everywhere. And it was like part of the persona of Athena. That's how she gained her knowledge. That's how they told the people. That's how, if you see one of these little guys, you're being watched by Athena. And remember, she's a night, you know, she, she, she finds things out at night, she's silent, and they are ferocious for their size. So this was a lesson to be learned, that there's much to be learned from this little owl. Wow. Now you see, I'm, look up the lyrics to Athena. Um, I did. And? and to, it was about actress Teresa Russell. Pete uh, went out to uh, see the Pink Floyd, The Wall. You know, the, are, are, you, are you getting this? <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. Okay. okay. Townsend went to see The Wall, Pink Floyd's The Wall, with his manager at the time, and his right. manager was going out with actress Teresa Russell, and Townsend was drunk, and that was the first night he ever did cocaine, and he fell in love with her, but she didn't reciprocate, and he went home and wrote it about Teresa, but Roger made him change the name. Wow. He changed it to Athena. Athena, yes. Um, well, you, you can see that, you know, Athena throughout history was worthy of admiration because of her intellect, her beauty, and her ferociousness. Well, I guess, yeah, she must have been, well, I see now, I don't know if Daltrey made her change the name. No, uh, Daltrey no. made Townsend change the name, um, then probably the Athena reference. Is, right. Is well, maybe he changed some lyrics. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting, though. Yeah, really. By the way, uh, do you notice on the, in fact, this looks really, do you notice on here, there is like, what's, this is an olive branch right here. You know, like there's mm -hmm. small right up in the corner. Yeah. And then right below it, there's a small crescent moon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought that was a, uh, the letter C, but it's a crescent moon. Okay. That can be found on I, the coin. I see it over his shoulder. Yeah, so so whoever did that tattoo, they actually did a really good analysis, or I should say replication. Now, <laughs> what is that an earring that she's wearing with a cross on it? What is that? That is part of a headdress that was on the uh, this portion on the crown with the feathering, and then it goes down. The stator? Yes. Wow. And Colby, that's yours? Really? Yeah, we, we, we you know, we, he's, he's who he is, so we have, you know, we're into I coins. coins. We yeah. like ancient coins because they're, they tell the story of history, and they have a lot, they have a lot to, to offer. And, what's, and I just happen to like the owl a yeah. lot, because I think it's the cutest one of all the coins, pers personally. So anyway. I know I'm a girl. I liked it because it no, was. No, that's for listen. That's fine. But I learned I, a lot of his, But I get to learn a lot of history through it. Brad's Brad's been teaching me my whole, you know, our whole relationship. Right. Okay, we don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my question about the uh, that coin, right. um, is there a name of the coin? What is it called? It is. Um, you know, I, I have my brain. Make something up. No one will know. No, 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 no. It's, it's. It'll come to him in a little while. The Athenian owl coin. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. But it says here in my book. Um, right. But, <laughs> yeah, are those, well, is that an actual real one from then? Yeah. 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 This one was, we've been able to triangulate between 479 and 420 BC, this specific coin. The family of coins, they made them from around 480 you know, about 440 to 420 BC. Uh, you know, Antique Roadshow's coming to town. Um, yeah. um, no. I should bring it. Um, okay, one <laughs> well, of our regular well, viewers oh. and very intelligent man, Tom Heimish. Oh, Tom Heimish. Yep. Says Athena was a nuclear bomb. Wow. Athena was a nuclear bomb. Okay, can more details? Yeah. Yeah, explain, Tom. Yeah, what explain, Tom. Like? What are you talking about? The song? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, another one of our regular viewers who is a drummer, Chris Chanel, he lives up in Rhode Island. He said, Brad and Kobe, they know their stuff. Woo! <laughs> there you go. Actually, if you guys, we were going to mention this at the end, but. Anyone who might have questions for next week, 
write them in like during yeah. the week to oh, Steve, yeah. and then he'll t feed them to us because we can't go ahead. You want to? Yeah, talk next week we're going to do potluck dinner with with Thanksgiving. So I would love to have if someone can add anything you want on symbols and symbology and rock or whatever. Yeah. Throw them out there. We'll put them in. Oh the right, yeah. On anything. Yeah. On, yeah. On, on anything to do with symbology or rock and roll yeah, imagery so or any whatever of that. Whatever you want to know. Yeah. No, I had a lot of jewelry on. Remember? Well, I'm sorry. We'll say again, Colby. What? We'll see how we do. Let's do it. Yep. I'm sure you'll do fine. But I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking this thing is like thousands of years old. Yeah. Uh, um, it's special. Is but is it like? Are they very rare? Are they worth a lot of drachma so, or whatever it is? So <laughs> they range depending on quality and rarity and other factors, of course. This particular one is a museum grade piece. If you notice, um, the work around it, there's an, a small inner lip bezel that we have attached there that we have literally pronged on so we could remove that lip and, and remove this coin without damaging it because we didn't want to harness it incorrectly and damage thousands of years of history for a little fun. So, so am I correct in assuming that this is a custom piece that was done at yeah. Bradley's Jewelers in South yeah. Fort Myers? That is that 41. Is it is and, a custom piece of Andrea Lane. Plug. Shameless plug. I agree. <laughs> I, no, I, hey, I, I popped it out there. That's awesome. Um, now, Stephen and James have uh, stuff from the Atosha. Oh, yeah. sure which I have done much study on the Atosha. In fact, you know the song, um, Southern Cross from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young? We are going to have a whole, we're going to have a whole program on that very song, subject, meaning, and how it relates to the Atosha and the discovery of America. Wow, all right, well, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I, I didn't know whether that's how everybody found the coins. I mean, you know, is that like an archaeological thing? They find them and then, yeah, I, that just blows my mind. It is an outstanding, you know what, you know what, there's so many amazing things to do in this world by just understanding the world around you. Uh, it really is one of those things. It's a passion for mine to, to study coinage because that's really where I got most of my basis of knowledge. Um, in fact, I, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, I used to collect, um, as a kid, pennies and dimes. I had those blue books with the holes sure. in them. Sure. Then I got into drugs and... <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what? Yeah. Listen, Steve, we'll show you some coins oh, one yeah. day and you can That's compare so the workmanship of what these were like versus what we make today. Yeah. There's no comparison. No comparison. The, the way they well, did it the day. How did they do? I have to ask. Did they pour that? Is it was it a mold? Or, you know, like a negative and a positive? Did they pour that? They had I a don't... negative and a positive, and then they put a a molten hot piece of of silver or gold in between the two pieces, and hit it with a strike, and then they would let it cool, and then they would hit it again. So sometimes you would have. Uh, what's called a double strike on a coin because it would pop off the end and you would get a low grade or a, a, a edging. And that's why these coins, finding them with this crisp of strike is, is rare. And just to give you an idea, this is probably a, a seven to $10,000 piece of, of jewelry. I was going to, I mean, I didn't want to, you know, I, I don't want anybody heading over to your place to try to get it, but in, this is a silver one. Yeah, and then the, the 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 of course the metal we put in the frame is is 18 karat yellow and white gold. Interesting, man. I I mean, you know, listen, I, we're kidding around about all this. I wasn't kidding about the drugs, but um, yeah. we're, kid, we're we're kidding around, <laughs> kidding around about it all. Um, but this is incredibly interesting. When I see things like that from so long ago. Not that I, you know, I'm, I was never really terribly interested in archaeology or any of that stuff. But I will tell you, we found a giant bone on our property. When was that? Yesterday? Okay, before. I'm, I'm serious. And I said to see buried in the backyard yeah, <laughs> because of that show. Because that's one of the shows that, that I do. But no, look, wait till you see this. This is crazy. So we sent it to uh, our friend that's a Yeah, I, I sent it to... Uh, <laughs> 
Look at this thing. It's giant. Uh, oh. You know what? I'll give you perspective. I'll put That's my exactly. hand up. Look well, at that thing. We have found out what kind of bone it is. Yeah. Is that a cow? Is, is that yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yes. it's a bovine. Cow, cow, bovine femur. But I mean, yeah. you don't want to find a giant bone like that on your property. And it's like, what? Yeah, right. What, do I have to call CSI unit? I know, that's what we thought. Well, no, well, I would think so, but I called Bruce, um, who, was a who is a vet, and he identified it as a bovine, uh, bovine femur. Yeah. Nice. And it probably, like, was Yeah, and it's got to be old. I mean, it's, it's old, this thing. It's, well, you can yeah. tell. So I guess maybe cows died, you know, because this was a cow town all those well, years sure. ago. And this house was built in 73. Yeah. So uh, this is part of the garden where I had never like dug up or anything. Right. I was like, uh oh, oh. <laughs> what the hell? What is yeah, that? Yeah, that's it. And now all of a sudden, there's, like, there's spirits going around in the backyard. It's like a, it's a no, nightmare. there's not. Hey, and that leads us to in Native Americans, many Native American cultures view the owl as the guardian of the underworld and and for the dead. Of the well, underworld and the dead. I was just reading about that. That's true. Because uh, its ability, the, the owl's ability to see at night was uh, important. And that owl, the owl was invoked by the Native Americans as an oracle of hidden knowledge. Because they could see at night. Wow, well, that makes sense. I mean, you know, I, if you see those eyes and, um, and are those six little owls? Does it have owlets? Yeah, little baby oh. owlets. So, so here's what's interesting. You know, we were talking about about the boogeyman, and you told me you had a song about the boogeyman. Yeah, the yeah. boogeyman. Well, that's the English boogeyman. It's called the boogeyman. Right. Right. And and doing some research on the boogeyman. This is a great story. <laughs> it used to be on almost every culture in the world. They had their own version of the boogeyman, and it all had the same purpose every time, which I think is interesting. To scare the crap out of the kids, yep. to come in, at, at, to, to bring them in at night. Because they, you know, when they would hear the hoot, they would say, oh, that's the boogeyman, or the boogeyman, or whatever. Yeah. There's a million little names where it brought the kids in at night. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And what's interesting is um, the great horned owl, they're the ones with the that, that are pretty distinctive. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. they, they were referred to as flying tigers because at nighttime when you see them and you can only see their eyes, you yeah. can't see the rest of their body. Ah. If, if you were attacked by one of those and they're incredibly territorial, if you were walking, walking in the woods, they would attack people all the time, scare yeah. the crap out of them. They'd run back to wherever they came from. So I was attacked by the boogeyman or a flying tiger or whatever the hell it was why would they attack people? yeah why do they attack people what they're territorial get out of my way i got eggs around here wow really? that's so cute you would never believe how mean they are right so the question is who are they oh, man that's <laughs> really that's crazy yeah. So who are these these owls? And with that said, I would like to conduct a small experiment for the viewer listenership if they want to participate. Okay, okay. yeah, pay attention. We were talking about this today, and and Brad has something that he wants to try to involve you guys in. So uh, right. yes. so, so listen up. We're talking to you viewers. Yeah, we're talking to you Inter viewers. Wake up and wake Inter your cat up too. Interactive. <laughs> if you wanted to go on to some type of YouTube. thing, we'll call it YouTube, sure, and play on your own quiet enjoyment at home so we don't have any copyright issues. Yeah, because I can't do it or I'll get busted. Yeah. Exactly. But the wonderful song by The Who, Who Are You? Right. If you wanted to play it for the next couple of minutes, it will be enjoyable because we're going to discover who the owl is. Because there's a lot of questions about who they are. In fact, my father-in-law, Marvin, he asked me tonight, how many different species of owls are there? Oh. He did? And then he said, like, three. <laughs> right. So, I was like, Dad, really? 
know yeah. there's a great horn down yeah, the barn owl. Yeah, but there's I know a, of three. We're right gonna up. call the we're gonna call the owls an extraordinarily strong argument for evolutional tendencies in this world. Because there are so many subgroup division varieties of the owl family. There are at least twenty-five in North America alone. Wow. And many of them look a lot like each other and sometimes behave like each other. And think about it. Whenever you yeah. see Halloween stuff, there's owls. Yeah, yeah. there's always owls and yeah. stuff like that. Right. So the song itself, Who Are You? Yep. Begs a question because it is a question. And what the heck is that song about? Does it's anybody about know? I, we know exactly we know what that exactly song is about. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. It was at the Hard Rock in London. Right. And um, it's when um, punk rock first started to take over, and right. John Watton was in there, and people weren't paying any attention to Pete. It was like, ah. Yeah, because Pete was on the way out, and, out and, and, and uh, the... Johnny Rotten and right. all of them were like the in, and everybody's paying attention to Johnny Rotten, and Pete got drunk, and he said, uh, he went, then he left. And that's when he uh, got woken up in a Soho doorway. Woke up in a Soho doorway. Right. Policeman right. knew my name. Yep. So right. uh, it's who are you? Who the fuck are you? He's saying that to exactly. Johnny. Right. Exactly. So the yeah. question okay. is, who the fuck are you? And that is the song. And it this mantra really becomes something important because at the end of the day. If you can't answer the question of who are you, then who really should care about you to begin with? Because well, that's it, true. It, it, it's you have to know yourself. And that's part of this song is a self-discovery and understanding from another point of view who yourself actually is. And John well, Entwistle actually well, told us what Yeah, it was, yeah, that it was John about. that told us what it was about. I mean, yeah. Because uh, Pete was was uh, Pete's not really one that you would think is a fighting guy, what? and it's, uh, no, I mean physically, you know, I it's uh, well Roger knocked him out with one punch, so That's uh, true, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> but he was obviously getting pretty um, belligerent Angry. with Johnny Rotten yeah, well, yeah. because Johnny Rotten was you know everybody knew who Johnny Rotten was and nobody was saying this was what 80s? 80s yeah and nobody you know Pete was out of vogue you yeah. know so it, it upset him greatly that that no one knew who he was so he wrote he wrote the song who are you asking the cat you know the question about Johnny Rotten, Johnny Rotten who yeah. you know who the him, are you you know who the fuck are you because yeah. I guess he really never even heard of him why would he hear of him <laughs> why would pete hear of that yeah. you know but pete you know and pete's an interesting guy but uh or in john's uh in in john's vernacular a nice bunch of guys <laughs> yeah but you yeah. know keep them away from sharp instruments yeah yeah stay away from yeah now listen you know what we've all we, we've all got our own each to his own sewage isn't that what they well, say actually you know an art student, you know, so he's like, um, artsy. Yeah, he's one of the, you know, eccentric artsy people. That's how you get away with that. That's how you explain that away that he was artsy. And his mother was, and uh, and his father were like alcoholic musicians. Alcoholic musicians. <laughs> well, I, that's his <laughs> I've, I've never heard of those. <laughs> alcoholic musicians <laughs> perish well, the thought. No, wow. you're killing. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah, funny. So, look, 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 look. what? The burrowing owl. Oh, there he exactly. is. You know, I'm gonna. T I got to tell you a story about the burrowing owl. Yeah. We when when we here. first moved here, we lived over. We we just we rented a house for uh, our dog to be able to swim in because we weren't really sure where we wanted to live. We didn't and know anybody. We didn't know anybody. There. We didn't know any areas. We didn't know anything. So we go to Publix on what is that college parkway yeah right. over by mcgregor and college and there's a little owl and a little, he's a little girl said that's bob yeah she goes that's bob he, <laughs> he says, was like in the parking lot a piece of grass he had his nest there talk about who the, are you right so we would go and see bob so yeah we went to see bob <laughs> we used to go see him all the time he, he was, was so, so cool yeah 
Yeah, good old Bob. Now, who's this? that? Looks like a little one. This one. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a small horned owl. What one was then, it? The Rockefeller Christmas tree. Are you listening to the music in the background, guys? Well, they aren't. They can't. No, but, but other people I'm might. I'm asking the audience. That's oh, right. The watcher audience. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yes. It, <laughs> See, there's so, I don't want to get back to that. A lot of our audience actually watches the show on their phones, or they listen to it while they're doing, you know, cooking dinner or whatever. So I don't know if they know how to like go and get the song. Well, what are you saying? Our audience is not. Well, imagine uh, the song them? in your head. Right, because I'm singing it right now in my mind. Oh, okay. Tom Heiner said about Athena 1970 accidental launch of missile that landed south of the mexico border instead of the white sands test site oh he said he assumed that's where pete got his inspiration from the lyrics because in athena pete says is she's just a girl she's a bomb oh interesting ah. see what happens when you assume tom <laughs> And what? And I recognize that owl oh, from the God. cigar company. Now Sue Lucente, who lives in Pennsylvania, says she's singing in her brain. Oh, okay. So they are. They're, they're following as, along in their brain. As are we. All right. We love that, Sue. Yeah, we do love that. She's and more owls. Her. And now this is, you know, one of the things that makes uh, the owl so unique too is the the fact that they can fly almost silently. Um, they have a unique brand of. Was that a great snowy owl? Uh, is owl that the great snowy owl? By night. Wow. Why does it have such big feet? Well, okay. they, the number one, you Artistic have... Artistic license, I think. Well, actually, the, the feet actually are not large. It's that there is an incredible amount of dense fur around them so they can stay in the Arctic. Oh. oh. There's the tundra type well, weather. Well, is it fur or is it, or is it feathers? It's a... That's a really good question. It is a dense layer of fur, uh, of feathers that are are that have behave like a fur because it's really soft and, and, and snowy. It's very light and beautiful. But uh, one it, of our viewers says, "Wise old owls." I wonder why they use that phrase. Well, because they know stuff. That's how they well, think. They, know. they ask the question. <laughs> exactly. That makes them wise. When you ask questions, it makes you wise because you learn something if you get an answer. That's what Athena would say. Wow. Ah. Well, thanks for saying that. That's she uh. Look at this okay, guy. So, so who do you think he is? is? Who do I think he is? Um, well, I think I he... would. He looks like the guy who played the three-eyed raven in uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones. In Game of Thrones, but You're I know getting that's so not... close. Really? I'm so close. He's a wizard. Oh, mm. white hot! In fact, we're gonna have to say oh. when you say wizard, who else do you think it could be? Um. Most people call him Merlin. Sorcerer. Merlin. Okay. Yeah, Merlin. Okay. Right. Merlin the sorcerer. He had an owl. Yes, he did. In fact, his name, it took me a long time to figure this one out. The name of his bird was Archimedes. Archimedes. I've heard of him. No, Isn't he's that Greek too, right? First century Roman. Oh, Roman. But wait a minute. It was Island of Syracuse. Was Archimedes a, a person or was was it that bird? Archimedes was a person, but as the uh, King Arthur tales were developed, when they brought in the character of Merlin, they associated him with the bird of wisdom and night. Wow. Yeah. And this bird, he named him Archimedes. Okay, so after the guy, yeah, Archimedes. Who was the guy? Yes. Archimedes. And who was the real? Who was Archimedes? The, the, the person. Yeah. What was his claim? I'm trying to communicate with Angus here, just because I don't. He, he's going to come in and you know, uh, hang on a he's second. He's probably watching. We're running a little late. I think he knows, or he would have been in. Okay. Um, so. Brad, what what is Archimedes the person? So the guys. man, human Archimedes, was a real person, and he was considered to be one of the brightest of all tacticians, military advisors, inventors in history. 
you know the saying eureka i found it mm -hmm. that was him he was under he he was sitting in a bathtub one day and realized that when he sat down and the water would displace upward he realized wait a second i can separate gold from other metals and all this stuff by using their specific gravity of weight i found it and that's wow why. eureka Eureka. So yes, he is credited with that. So Archimedes was a brilliant tactician. And probably wow. we'll look at him at another I'll show. I'll have a whole show yeah, on him. Because he's pretty, he's, but, he's a big dog. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people wonder who was Merlin? Merlin was technically not a real human being, but based off of another. And remember I, I called you today, I said something kind of weird happened? Yes. Oh, yeah. This is really weird, actually. I bought this tarot card set from a friend of mine about two weeks ago. And when I opened up the tarot cards last night for the first time. This is true story. I was here to witness. Do you know anything about tarot cards? I am learning. I have bits and pieces of knowledge. But look at is what the first magic? one was. The first card I found was this one. The owl with the moon behind it. How and weird. and and the in Merlin's shot there was a full moon behind him too. And the second card was this one. What is that one? The Merlin card. Merlin. Oh, the hermit, right over. Merlin. Oh yeah. Merlin. Yeah. And, How and, weird is and that? And it's but it's not pronounced Merlin. It's pronounced Mirden. And that was his real name. He was actually a live character up from history approximately sixth century from England, before England wow. was England. Wow. And he was and he was considered to be a great philosopher and he was also uh, into prophecies. He could he was proven he came forth a lot of the Arthur Arthurian tales, the King Arthur Knight tales come from his no, before his time frame, but many of his, his legends that came from him were the inspiration of the story, or many parts of that story. Wow. Wait, was it like a sword in the stone? Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. the lady in the lake. And... Yeah, the, that old thing. So, uh, much of it is, is derived from him. And what's interesting is around 6th century, when he, was, when he was younger, when he was in, like in his early 20s, he was a part of and witnessed a horrible battle between the Saxons and other people that were ransacking the area that was left over from Rome's demise. And he witnessed such horrific displays of battle. He ran into the woods and never came out. He suffered PTSD and said, you know what? I am the hermit. I'm going to live in amongst the woods. And he learned cosmology and became friends with the with all of the animals and some say he was able to communicate with animals and the animals gave him the wisdom of sight beyond eyes meaning he was able to see into the next realm wow well i mean go. you know you mentioned ptsd um have you been seeing the stuff about ptsd that, that they found or that they think they found a way to fix it oh yeah you know but i, I I've heard yeah, of different really? methods. With, Which method are you talking about? With, just, with MDMA. We just saw yes. that. With, with, with ecstasy. Yeah, we just but saw that given on Sunday morning with Jane Pauley. Yeah, and I mean, it's for real. And these, yeah. you know, the, these people that have been, uh, it's just, it's... Mostly like so, uh, veterans? Yeah, it's, it's, it's PTSD, <laughs> mostly. But, I mean, it's amazing the things that they, you know, the things that, we were so have been so close to for all these years, Ken Kesey and that whole that whole thing. But I I don't mean but to get off the. But some man you know. said that I don't know who he is, but he said in 1984 he knew that um, ecstasy would help with I, I, PTSD. I didn't even know there was ecstasy. Well, I didn't I, know there was PTSD in 1984. Well, there was plenty well, of that. You know, know that. War. you know, George Carlton said it best. During World War, George Carlton, may he rest in peace, George one of my Car favorite, Car Carlin. Carlin. He, Carlin, yep. Yeah, when I saw him in concert, he said, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't call it PTSD. It was called shell shock. Right. Ah. As time moved on, it became post-traumatic stress, and then post-traumatic syndrome, and then PTSD. So 
he was a strong advocate of leaving it the term shell shock because it gave people the understand visual con comprehension right. of how horrible seeing something traumatic truly is. But yeah. You know, that Mer Mer what's his Murden. Name? Murden then was sought after after yes. many years for his wisdom. For his, yeah. So he was kind of pulled out of his Rip hermit hermited lifestyle yep. and people came to him for advice, so to speak, or he was well, forced they, into it. They advice. forced him into making these predictions. And uh, it was not to their benefit. He gave them all crappy ones. <laughs> and all of those horrible ones somehow came true. So um, respect for Meriden. Well, let me give you a full rock and roll, a full circle rock and roll Merlin moment. I'll right. take it. You would know. I was talking, well, <laughs> I was talking with Chris Entwistle, which is John's son. Right. And he had some good fortune recently and uh he said that he went out and bought the new audi e-tron right in merlin purple oh, oh merlin very purple. nice and you should see what this thing looks like uh so, wicked hey, I, I just had to make but it but it's you know, like he has to wait six he months has to wait six months because they don't yet. have the chips for the computer yeah. holy chip yeah yeah Speaking of Chip, do you guys watch the morning show? Yeah. Yeah? Really? I do don't you? know. Do you do with, with, with Jennifer Aniston? With Jennifer Aniston and... Oh, Reese no, Reese. no. I thought you were talking about another oh, show. No. I, mean, I don't know. On I, Apple TV. I, it's on Apple TV. No, not, not, not like, you know, our... I morning. can't even watch that stuff anymore after watching this show. It's like... If you get Apple TV, yeah. If you get Apple TV, it's if it, not, it's four ninety nine a month, or but, you can get a free week. For... What are you? You working for Apple? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call it's cousin really, Daniel. Really I'm gonna call cousin Daniel and rat you out. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'm crashing in on you on the owls here. Uh, please, please carry on because that's okay. I was gonna wrap up with, you know, the mysteries of the owl, in rock and in life. I'll tell you, there's much we can learn about this little animal, and I love them. They are awesome, but you have to respect them because either they can stop you from doing construction, yeah. or they can take out your. They can take out small animals if you leave them out at night. Um, they can scare you like the boogeyman, but most of all, they can give you great wis wisdom if you listen. Tell them about. Wow. Their, tell what? them about their wingspan. You tell me that they had a very big width, like for yeah. Rich. That's what one of our viewers said. The wingspan is amazing. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah, in uh, Georgia. Yeah, a great horned owl can be up to like five and a half, almost six feet. Um, just nature. huge. Uh, well, nature. I mean, I just, I just find the whole, the whole thread through nature is just amazing. And what about Ronnie? I'm going to tell you the part about how. They and eagles and owls oh, are yeah. great enemies. Yeah. Tell them all about it. Tell yeah, them. <laughs> for 55 million years, they have the biggest grudge match between animals in history because they hate each other. Owls will attack the small babies and eat their eggs, and eagles will snatch up owls and tear them apart in the sky. They absolutely do not get along. In fact, I'm glad I didn't mention it last night because the Eagles probably would have gotten, uh, I don't know, their feathers ruffled or something. They are not <laughs> fans at all. So, um, yeah, they're their original Hatfield and McCoys. Really? I, and and Eagles are not nocturnal, right? Or are they? Are and they that's hunt? why the Eagles yeah. are during the day and the owls hunt at night so that they don't, uh, but heads, although the you know what the snowy owl they will hunt in the daytime or in the nighttime they're kind of like listen I'm up there's food I'm eating yeah I'm like that uh, <laughs> Laura Richardson's family crest is an owl oh, oh one are of they our viewers Leeds? family crest is an owl yeah, she's the are they from the Leeds room. in in England are they from Leeds well Richardson Lori where's your family from. I don't know. I know she lived up in New York. She was a fan of Steve's band, Rat Race Choir. And we and used to play live at Leeds. Right, yeah. Well, and because in Georgia. Because typically, um, the owl represents fam the, 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 the clan or the families from Leeds. So, uh, generally. Wow. 
You're going to ask her on there? Yeah. I can't just ask her. I asked her. She's, oh, wait, Scotland, she said. Scotland, so. Huh? I have more to learn. Well, they probably left Leeds. <laughs> after but, the concert. <laughs> yeah, right, a, right after the concert. Yeah. They, they said, let's, they said we're, we're out of here. here. Let's go to Scotland accent. now. <laughs> what? What? They, they must have wanted a stronger accent. <laughs> so they left yeah. England for Scotland. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I don't think there's any huge it, concerts, uh, festivals in Scotland, but. There's no big, huge, no huge festivals in Scotland. Why? You know. Oh, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you heard about the Great Horns Festival in no, Scotland? No. Uh, I'll tell no. you. I'm going to show it to you later. I mean, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> okay, okay. Somebody has a question. Oh, Our question. drummer from Rhode Island, Chris, asked Brad if he ever saw the movie A Breed Apart. It's about the bald eagle. A Breed oh. Apart? Oh. Did not. No. Oh. Well, he'll have to watch it and get back to you next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll get back to you. So for next week, we're taking questions, random questions on yep. any... Symbols. Um, symbology or absolutely, and if they want to send a picture in, have them send a and picture in. We helpful. can do that too. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna play this uh, fast and loose and have some fun with it. That'll be fun. I I, I think I'll try to come up with some now, stuff. Now, Lori Richardson chimed in again. Oh. She said her family is both English and Scottish. She can't type fast enough. <laughs> she can't <laughs> type fast enough. Now, <laughs> That's okay, it, man. So maybe they are from Leeds. Well, so that's, I mean, that's pretty amazing. You know, the, and I know if, if you, I'm sure, uh, you know, we're kind of birders, not really birders, but I, but the, the we reason the that birds. the, 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 the <laughs> owls and most birds of prey have those, uh, you see how the tips of the wings, I'm sure you know this, are spread like that. That's what makes the silent flight. Part of it, yes. Because on it the breaks. Very top crest of their, on the very top crest on, on owls, they have a denser part of feather that absorbs sound as well. Oh. They look extra. Kind of that like I did not know. Like it, in a recording studio exactly. when you put the, the, the foam up, kind of like that? Yeah, sound absorption. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, so, it, yeah, it's so called, it's called Aurelex, but yeah, that's, right. you know. And that's why, another reason why the owl has been known as the harbinger of death. <laughs> because the only time you see them is when they're taking things out. Wow. Wow. Well, they, I mean, listen, they're, you know, they're not, I guess they're, and I guess they're not the friendliest bird in the Remember, world. I mean, the little ones are, those little uh, burrowing owls are, are pretty nice. One of our neighbors had an owl's nest in her pa palm tree down on Jeffries. Yeah. Remember they sent pictures? Yeah. Yeah. The babies fell out of a hole in the palm oh. tree like, and they put them back up there. So they don't make a nest. They make like a hole. They go. They live in the trunk or whatever it is. Again, I'm going to go back to they're a complicated species. Some owls burrow. Some owls steal uh, nests from other birds, and some owls make kind of haphazard uh, nests. They're not really. They're not the best nest makers. They're they like to take over nests and then build upon them typically. But again, they're variable. They're they're so adaptable. So do they kick other birds out? Absolutely. That's, mm. that's rude. Well, that's one of the reasons why <laughs> eagles and owls don't get along. So they take over eagle nests? Sometimes. Uh, you didn't know that eagles can rip them apart? Sometimes. Is that Angus? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, guess who's here? Our own, our own resident owl. Our, <laughs> our own resident owl. It's Angus. He looked like a great person. What's happening, hey! man? How are you? Uh, were you catching all that, Angus? You see birds. I see birds. Yeah. I was watching on my phone. Real interesting. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, Those listen, birds. guys, this was too much fun tonight. So do me a favor. Steve, ask your audience throughout the week to send questions in. Okay. Questions yeah. or pictures of things. Right, and, pictures yeah, we'll go questions. after it. Tattoos, cool. album covers, yep. whatever. Ne next week is potluck. Okay. Okay, that's good. And, and do we have any? Is, are those pigeons that are flying by, Angus? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> the no. owls are on alert. Watch your back. <laughs> yeah, here they come again. Wait, that's wait. amazing. 
Uh, hey, guys, hey, I, hey. I love all this, man. I mean, yeah. I, I really do. This this hour goes so fast. I know. It man. blows my mind. Um, it. It's I, it's really really great. It's really really great. Well, thank you for having us again. Wait, wait. I have a question for Brad. Sure. You were showing the cover of that Rush album, the Fly. Yes. I didn't hear what you had to say about that, though. Well, you know, I, you're right, and, and and thank you for bringing it back. We got ah. So Neil Peart, when he first uh, left home, he wrote this song about the feeling of freedom, right, and reinventing his life. Oh, and okay. it, it really was very special to him. And uh, when they put that song together, this was the imagery that came to mind: was taking flight and you know basically being on your own. Okay, all right. There you go. That's five million. All right, thanks. My pleasure. Oh, wow, cool. that's awesome, man. What well, a hey, good oh, one, Angus. Okay, nice well, way to wrap it up there, wait bud. Well, up, so wait one to... of the viewers has a question. Do they send the questions to Kobe and Brad or to Steve? No, send them to send Steve because they know how to get in touch with them easier. Yeah, just just uh, just send me the questions. Okay, send and, the questions. Yeah, to just me, direct message me and and, and we'll compile them for Kobe and Brad. Yeah, well, you know, and awesome. send them pictures as well. I think you can put pictures in the messages so yeah. do that and we'll find out what it all is and if you have something weird in your jewelry box that you want to know something about bring that yeah. too yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. <laughs> that's like our our, our my bread and butter yeah that's what we do and by yeah. the way don't forget it's thanksgiving so you know this is the thanksgiving potluck so anything goes and we'll see what we can pull out of his brain <laughs> well you know we were talking about eagles last week yeah and it begs the question, would we be eating the national bird? I don't think so. If if Franklin had his way. That was, he wanted an eagle? It would have no, been all Franklin. kinds of wrong. Turkey, turkey, turkey. Yeah, Ber yeah, Benjamin Franklin wanted the turkey to be the uh, the national bird. Yeah, because he felt it had nobility. Nobility. And it was delicious. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> I know. No, I can't can't put those two. Okay, together. well, listen, you know, <laughs> save save me the drumstick. Uh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> love you guys. Hey, we love, love you too. too. I, I'm actually going to call you after the show, and right. uh, we'll go over some stuff. And uh, I can't wait to hear what Angus has for me. So yeah, take care, kids. We'll talk to you in a little while. Great show. Great show. Great great, 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 great show. Was, wow. I caught some of it. Does it, it 